Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Design & Move. My name is Ryan Maxwell, this is Ryan Parr, this is Greg, and today we're going to bring you another episode of Design & Move here from the Fluid Health & Fitness Center. We do have a table of contents here that you're going to see in the corner. You can always fast forward to one of the segments if you've done this before. And at the end of the video, it's going to be a condensed version of it. You can just zip right to it if you've already gone through the tutorial. Today we're going to talk about a movement distortion or movement imbalance that impacts you and the general population. Today we're actually going to get into unequal leg length or leg length discrepancy. It may surprise you to know that the average person has some type of leg length discrepancy, meaning one leg is longer, whether it's the femur or the tibia, one of the bones of the leg, due to which it offsets your pelvis and can lead to postural or movement compensations. We want to make sure that we can get ahead of that if it's present in our own body. So today we're going to show you how to address all these major issues. If you have questions on it, we'd like you to reach out to us at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. We do have a blog on the topic. It's listed in the description below. And if you do want to get a hold of us or watch these videos on a weekly basis, you can go ahead and subscribe. We want to hear from you. First, we want to see which side of our body is actually longer than the other. Now, normally what you would do is with a qualified professional, maybe a physician or a movement specialist, you would have them lay you down and they would look at the difference between two bony markers to look at the leg length discrepancy or comparing one leg to another. And remember, most people have at least a centimeter deviation. Most people can compensate for that without any problem. Sometimes it's more than that. So today what we have is we have Greg sitting here you know, he's taking one shoe off to really kind of magnify or to take on the position of what a, a longer leg would look like on his right side. And if you can see, there is a noticeable obliquity or drop to his opposite hip. So this would represent a longer leg on the right side, whether that be a bigger tibia, in this case because this is elevated, this would be higher, right, or a longer fib femur. Either way, we know that the hip is going to be hiked up and it's traditionally going to shift the pelvis over to that same hemisphere. Right, and so when you see the structural difference, um, the muscles are going to adapt to that. So on this left side, you're actually going to see the foot want to churn out along with the femur. Mm -hmm. And what that's going to do is it's going to shorten the piriformis and the glutes, which come from the trochanter over to the sacrum. And then when you look on the right side, you're going to see an internal um, rotation of the foot and the femur, um, which is going to facilitate your adductor on the inside of your thigh. Um, and then that one's going to be overactive and tight as well. And so those are going to be the two muscles that we're going to address um, for a release today so that we can start bringing those legs into a more neutral position. So pretty important that we get a grip on it. If you do have specific questions, make sure to talk to your physician. This would be a qualified individual. They would actually take an x-ray. A lot of times you'll get a heel lift or a shoe lift if it's drastic. Today we're going to show you a handful of specific exercises to help accommodate and change the movement profile so you can help to reduce the compensation patterns that maybe you have set up in your nervous system because of that leg length. So on that, let's get actually to our release strategies. We're going to get Greg on the table. Let's get started. The first muscle we're going to target is the adductor group. It's the muscles that attach the femur to the front of the hip, and they actually pull the femur internally. So it will rotate the femur in, and this leads to what's called a valgus of the knee or an internal rotation. A lot of pain and stress around that area in the body for a lot of us. So not only does this impact the pelvis, but also the health of the knee. You're going to notice that Greg has got our fluid fast release ball. If you want one of those, you can buy one from our website. But it's a ball about the size of a, a softball. And it's going to go right in underneath your hip bone, about three or four inches down and inward, right where your groin, again, or what we would associate with our groin, our short fibers of our adductors, we're going to attach from the femur up to the hip. So he's putting pressure on that. Now remember, the muscles rotate the femur inward. They internally rotate the femur, and they help to lift the leg as well. So he's going to go and hold on to that ball by putting his weight of his leg on the ball, and then he's going to breathe out, flexing his abdominals, and then clench his glute at the same time. So that's going to help to pull the femur open a bit and pull the pelvis under to get a deeper stretch under the pressure of that ball. It's a flossing technique or a pin and stretch technique that's going to help to relax the muscle fibers so we can get more extension out of the muscle. So after you've held it for a good 30 sec 60 seconds or so, then you would go through this breathing protocol where you breathe out, flex your abs, clench your glute, 
let it go and see if you can sink into that ball a little bit deeper with each time. You can get about six to 10 cycles. And we're only gonna do it on the dominant leg or the leg that's hiked up and creating again that obliquity in the pelvis. So we wouldn't do both, just the side that was hiked up. All right, so now we're gonna address the leg that um, has the drop to it. And on that side, that piriformis muscle, the one that connects to your greater trochanter and into your sacrum, that muscle is gonna be shortened and tight. And so first we wanna take the ball, we wanna place it around um, right in between those two junctions in between the greater trochanter and the sacrum mm -hmm. on, that, on that left leg. Yep, so Greg's gonna do that with the ball here. And we have a little lacrosse ball we like the lacrosse ball because it's rubbery, it's viscous, it grips, so it's not going to slide around. And there's less pounds per square inch or more pounds per square inch because it's more acute, right? So the ball is going to go in through the glutes, which again are a big muscle group. The piriformis lays underneath of it, so we got to get underneath the glute and into that piriformis. In order to do that, he's going to get his legs into a position where he's going to actually flex through the femur. That's going to stretch the butt out, right? You can see his face, you know, he's kind of grimacing here. It's, it's a painful one, you're gonna feel it. Now, a couple, couple quick things, you don't want it to be so painful that your body guards and you clench. And if that goes on, this knee's gonna wanna kick out. You're gonna wanna rotate it outward. And two, you may feel it as tingling down the leg. If you're pushing too far on the sciatica nerve that lays underneath that piriformis, again, you might be pissing it off and actually doing more harm than good. So. If you feel that, lay off of it or adjust to a different spot, right? So once he's on the muscle for about a minute or so, remember we're using isolated tension in that area acutely until the muscle likes to relax. This is a nervous system release first. Then what are we doing? Then from there, you wanna make sure that um, you're actually putting a stretch on that muscle. So we're gonna bring the knee into flexion and adduction, which is gonna be the opposing movement of that muscle and then you're going to floss through that muscle for the rest of the 60 to 90 seconds um, to facilitate um, a better release on the piriformis muscle. Yeah, so once you get through that you'll notice that your leg should be able to get further and further across the body so you'll be able to internally rotate and you can kind of see how these hemispheres work against each other. Right? We targeted the groin that pulls the femur in now we're actually targeting the piriformis that restricts the femur from rotating in on the opposite hemisphere. So we're balancing out these torsion relationships that help to stabilize the pelvis and then the legs inside the sockets of the pelvis. Okay, good job, Greg. Thank you for that. On that note, we've gotten through our release. So now we want to go into the muscles that are traditionally underactive, the ones that aren't supporting the body, so that we can reset these muscle relationships and get everything to stay balanced around the major joint centers. Let's get right to it. The first exercise that we're going to do is a muscle activation targeting the QL and extensor muscles on the side of the body or hemisphere that's dropped. So if my leg was longer on my right side, my left would be down. So we're gonna work the muscles that help to pull the pelvis up and bring that pelvis up to a neutral horizontal alignment. So Greg is using a pull here to give him a little bit of more added support so he doesn't have to rely so much on his glute medius on the right side. Again, a traditionally underactive muscle group, but we're gonna give him a little heads up so he can work up to doing this as a balance without the, the additional help with that base of support, all right? So essentially, he's gonna hold onto that, that pole, he's gonna hike his hip up. So he's gonna arch his back out subtly, shift his weight to his right leg, and then lift his hip up. Now at the same time, our goal is not to let that leg dump in. We just talked about releasing the muscle groups that pull that femur in. So if you notice that your femur is starting to rotate inward or the foot starts to rotate out, you may wanna readjust and try to reduce the range of motion or maybe brace yourself a little more. So okay, let's go ahead and give him a little example of what it looks like. He's lifting that pelvis up and compressing. So he's bringing the pelvis closer to his rib cage. Lift and back down. Lift and back down. Now, as you get more familiar with the movement, you feel more comfortable, what you're gonna to wanna to do is try to lift it up, hold it ascended, and then keep it there for three seconds and then slowly let it come down. You'll notice on the hemisphere that's normally longer on that femur or that tibia, your hip might wanna dump out. If you feel that, again, keep your glute flexed. So try to keep your butt flexed on that hemisphere, hold it in a contracted state, and then let the opposite hemisphere drop down. 
okay? We're gonna do that for about 20 repetitions. If you're holding it for three seconds, letting it come down for four, it's a pretty lengthy period of time. You're looking at a couple minutes at least. And if you start to see that your, ten or your posture starts to break down, go ahead and stop. We wanna to work to the point of your body not being able to facilitate the movement cleanly. So if you're seeing that, give yourself a minute recovery and then go after it again. Ideally, we wanna see at least two sets of about two minutes of time under tension with that isometric hold at the top of the flexion and then let the muscles slowly let the pelvis drop down so you can start working with the elements of gravity, okay? So once you're done with that, we're gonna move into our next position, still focusing on that deficient or uh, smaller leg and that'll bring us into our next balance position. So let's get right to it. Next exercise is a single leg balance on the left leg with a focus on adduction of the femur into the midline of the body. So if we recognize that the hip is naturally ascended or hiked up on one side, the other hemisphere likes to drop and externally open. So if we're braced on that leg, like in mid stance of gait, it has a tendency to want to rotate open or the pelvis will want to swing open and that's actually something that's gonna distort the way the femur rides in the socket of the pelvis. So we wanna learn how to get it balanced and get that femur right back into the midline of the body. So in order to do that, we're in a single leg balance on the left side. Greg's gonna show you how to do this here. And as I'm now narrating this, he can get, go ahead and get started with it. But essentially what we're looking at is the level of the hip line and the front of the hip bones. They're called your ASIS. They should be neutral. We don't wanna see a lot of rotation or hiking in either of them, they should be neutral the entire time. So what we want to do, and Greg's using a pole again for stability, he's going to try his best. Obviously you guys at home do your best, but the goal is to let the hip come down by bending and flexing through the pelvis and the knee, and then at the bottom of your drop there, you're going to slightly rotate the hemisphere on the opposite side, the hike side, in to the femur on the other side. So that's gonna bring that femur inward, adducting the femur, flexing the groin, and then come up and lift it up to parallel. So as you come up out of it, you're only gonna lift the hip up, push through the knee and the hip, till you get to a parallel position at the top of that hip extension, and then come back down. Now just like the first activation technique, we wanna make sure that we're controlling it against gravity. So he's gonna go down to a count of about three or four, hold the pressure for a couple seconds, and then come up for a count of one or two. Now again, the goal here is not to let the hip rotate inward excessively, and not to let the knee dump in too much, and again, not to let the pelvis rotate out. So you wanna make sure that the hip line stays neutral the entire time. You'd start with a couple sets again, two sets of 20 repetitions. Give yourself about a minute in between to recover, and if you can't do it cleanly for those 20 reps, build up to it, and in no time you'll be able to maintain the position. Once again, keep the hips nice and neutral the entire time. For our last movement, we're gonna be targeting his hip flexors and groin and abdominals all at once. So up to this point, what we've done is reduce the pressure relationships around the traditionally overactive muscles from that hip hike. Again, we talked about the groin on the dominant side or the hike descended side and again, the piriformis on the drop side. We activated the muscles that were responsible for holding the pelvis up on the hemisphere that was dropped, and then we activated the muscles that pulled that femur internally as it would come through in a gait cycle. Now we wanna overload it in isolation, having Greg here in a horizontal position. So to do that, you're gonna need a couple pound band. This is a pretty light uh, exercise band. You can get these at any uh, fitness store or you can order from us online. But the bottom line is that the uh, band is out at a diagonal angle from medial to lateral away from the body, slightly away. It's gonna provide some dynamic tension so that when Greg comes up through his hip flexion, it's gonna pull the leg out into abduction and external rotation. He's gonna have to fight against that and adduct, that means bring the weight towards the center of the body and internally rotate to fight against that dynamic force. 
Okay, so again, the resistance is here. He's creating the force through his groin, and again, the obliques and abdominals to support his lumbar pelvic as he goes through. So on that note, he's gonna get set up. Lower back's gonna be in contact with the ground. We're gonna make sure that those hip bones are again equal to each other the whole time. He's gonna breathe in and lift that leg up with the knee in extension. So go ahead and lift it up, Greg. He's gonna breathe in as he comes across. Hold and fight against that tension, and then breathe out. By actively breathing out, you're flexing your abdominals. It's gonna to help to support through pelvis as you let the leg down so that the hip wouldn't drop down with it. Again, we're trying to make sure that those hips stay stationary as he moves through the leg. So go ahead and breathe in. He's coming up with it as he breathes in. Make sure that the knees are staying inside the hip line, breathing out, flexing the abdominals as the leg comes down. And once again, getting a chance to target the groin muscles, the flexors in the front of the hip, and again, the abdominals and obliques that are helping to stabilize the pelvis. One more time, we would do this strength movement for two sets of 20 repetitions, just like the, the first two strength exercises. We wanna overload your type one stabilizer muscle fibers, keeping all your joint centers in the right position and making sure that we're tracking the leg or appendage in that nice neutral alignment within your hip angle or what's called your Q angle, which should be about seven to 10 degrees from the center of your ankle to the center of your hip up at the pelvis. Okay, good job, Greg. So one more time, two sets of 20. Give yourself a nice slow eccentric extension of that leg, meaning you're really bringing your leg down. Make sure you don't let your hip rotate. If at any time you start to see the toe rotate out, you start to see the hip rotate open, or the pelvis starts to drop down, these are all indicators that you're losing control of your inner core, or intrinsic core, that's gonna actually set up negative patterns of movement. You don't wanna do that, so if you do fatigue, stop, give yourself a minute recovery, and then finish off with the rest of the volume. Again, try to amass at least four minutes of time under tension, ideally two sets, two minutes. So that brought us to the end of the program. This one, again, was on a structural leg length imbalance. It means there's an inequality in the leg length, and due to which the pelvis will shift It'll crumple the spine. This can create all sorts of havoc on the discs of the spine and lead up into the shoulders. Create a whole host of issues aside from just the hips and the knees. So make sure to follow along and do the program a couple times a week. You should start to see a noticeable difference in your posture and how you move. Hopefully some of the pain, if you are experiencing pain, should subside. And remember, if this was a subtle imbalance, this is a great way to approach it to help correct for it. If it's pretty big or severe, you're probably gonna wanna go see a physician, take a gander at your leg length, true leg length imbalance, and see if there's something that needs to be used as a support or a brace, like a heel lift or a foot insert. So if you have questions again, make sure to reach out to us. Our email is at admin at fluidhealthandfitness.com. Or again, you can read the blog on the topic in the description. Make sure to follow along with us each week and subscribe. Your body's designed to move, so stay in motion. We will see you next time for another episode. We'll talk to you soon.